head into the podcast topics, I wanted to quickly give some of you guys a recommendation on new music to check out. I've been listening to Troy Sivan's Something to Give Each Other since it dropped last weekend. And I have to say, this might be what I kind of talk about when I speak about the less is more. Because this album is only 10 tracks long, but I swear to God, it actually feels longer than 10 tracks. There's so many moods, so many different emotions, so many sounds, so many textures, so many interesting bits of songwriting that you actually think it's a far longer album than what it actually is. It's only 10 records. Now, one of the things I'm really annoyed about with Apple Music lately, whenever a new album comes out, for some reason, I'm starting to incorrectly download the um, non-explicit version. I'm not sure it's because Apple are switching them around if they're purposely putting the non-explicit version first in the carousel of albums that you see. But for some reason, ever since um, For All The Dogs, I keep mistakenly downloading the non-explicit version of the songs. It's annoying because I want to hear the flipping cuss words. You know what I mean? I don't want to hear this stuff censored. But the centering does work, you know, pretty flawlessly. It's not like you really notice it. When you're listening to it along and you're kind of catching some of the words and you know what's going to come next, it doesn't come next and you hear a little pause, you're like, oh, this is probably the one that's been censored. So make sure you keep uh, an eye out on that. Maybe it's just me and I'm being redacted. But I've honestly have enjoyed Troy Sivan something um, to give each other. If anything, it's not as out at the gate it's not as out of the gate poppy as i thought it would sound it's a little bit more um musical it kind of shows off his artistry a little bit more it it honestly makes me super excited for the next album i know fans are annoying like that to artists he's probably worked on this album for many years i think yeah his last album came out what um 2018 or something like that right i think so or 2020 so it's been a while so for a fan like myself to say oh yeah i can't wait for his next one but This sets a good sort of basis and a primer to what he has coming up in the future. I think so. This kind of shows the kind of breadth and the range that he has because he could easily go down the really, I wouldn't even call it pastiche, but the almost cartoony, disco-y, poppy, indie dance lane if he wanted to. And he would smash it. Like, honestly, if he wanted to go down that route, um, you know, think of like MGMT, Tame Impala Sonics, right? Mixed with Elton Gen- Elton John-esque vocals. He could easily smash that if he wanted to. But he obviously likes to do what he does now at the moment. And the what I like about the album is that if you heard Rush, the single, which is honestly one of the best records to drop this year, it's really frustrating to me how it's sort of like dropped out of the flipping... Um, it feels like it's dropped out of the the listening of shit of people li- hearing it outside. I, I think I still hear people playing Kylie Minogue, um, Padam Padam way more than Troy Sivan's Rush, even though I think both records are probably neck and neck in terms of quality, right? In terms of ones I want to hear on the dance floor when I'm at Panorama Bar, when I'm at Palomas, when I'm at any other party around the world, and I want to hear that kind of really poppy, glitzy, feel-good music on the dance floor that, you know, you might hear on radio, because sometimes some of the best sets ever are usually those sets where the DJ would swing in a little kind of bait track that you all know and love. A good example of that is Cormac. He absolutely smashes that ability to do that um and obviously boris one of the residents over there berghain but i really do like both tracks but it's a shame that rush is sort of like falling in the pecking order compared to um kaiman those padam anyway go back to troy sivan i really have enjoyed this album i think it surprised me because it doesn't sound like what rush sounds i think in my head i thought okay he's got rush he's got a particular kind of you know um palette he's going for and even when he dropped uh what was it one of your girls it also sounded within the Rush sort of like sonics and with the Rush sound of like themes and sounds. But then when the album comes out, the range of tunes he has on there is really broad. And like I said before, for all the artists out there that just pile nonsense onto the album and don't do any quality control, there is something to be said for somebody that puts together an album of 10 tracks and it legitimately sounds like it's much longer than that. I think the runtime of the entire album is like, 30 minutes or something like that so if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of time you hate the whole like 20 plus records on, a, on an album and you want to listen to something that's going to make you feel good that's going to be a good little bit of company for you to it's going to be a good little um soundtrack to take you to work um to take you to go see your parents to take you on the little errands that you run um during the day and in the weekend i really recommend something to give um something sorry something to give each other by troy sivan one of the records that i really like on this right that I think is superb, might be still got it. 
and it kind of reminds me, if I'm not mistaken, still got it. Reminds me, um, is it Wildest Night or Coldest Winter? What is it? There's a there's an album, there's a track on 808s and Heartbreak. That's it. Say you will. Sorry, I know it's not the right one. There's a track on um 808s and Heartbreak by Kanye West. The first track on that album, 808s and Heartbreak, called Say You Will. And for some reason, still got it. Sort of sounds like Say You Will. If you haven't heard it before, please do. Please check out Kanye West Say You Will from A West and Heartbreak, one of his best albums ever. That album or that single, um, or the track, sorry, on Troy Sivan's album, track number five, sounds very similar to it. So I love the feel of that. But my favorite, and also just to make an actual point, actually, in my room, featuring this person called uh, Guitara Cadilica Fuente, I'm not too sure if it's actually Tracy Evans on the album or on the lyrics and stuff or somebody else. I'm not too sure who's actually singing in Spanish, but I really did enjoy that song. But my favorite song on the entire album has to be Silly. It's got such a good vibe to it. I love the lyrics. Um, and it's actually produced by this guy called Ian Kirkpatrick, who also, if I'm not mistaken, produced one of my favorite Dua Lipa records called Don't Start Now. You know, the one that's like, if you don't want to see me dancing with somebody, right? You know that one, right? I sound exactly like fucking Dua Lipa, right? If you want to believe that anything could stop me, <laughs> don't show up. Hey, don't come out. Hey, don't start caring now about me now. Walk away. You know how. Don't start caring now about me now. <laughs> and there's a really good uh, remix of it too by Kate Chinada that came out a few um, years ago as well that you should check out if you haven't checked it out. It's one of the underrated K Chinada remixes. Like, it's absolute slapper. I remember when I used to play out a lot, I used to always drop that on the flipping dance floor and people would be like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, it's an absolute banger of a track, but yeah, Silly on Troy Sivan's album, track number eight is probably my favorite. The second track that's probably my favorite, outside the singles, the obvious ones, might have to be the last track, um, How to Stay With You. The songwriting on that is pretty magical, I'm not going to lie, and it might make you very, very emotional once you kind of um, read some of it out. Uh, let me see if I can find it. And it's very, you know, it's, it's very interesting. But let, let me let me read it to you. Right? It says, uh, um, cut my garden down. I've got no flowers. But it's the, t it's the thought that counts. I wish you lived a little closer. Maybe when we're a little older, we can set up a shop back where you are or I can take you home. I feel like my brother might like you, just not the same way I do. It's so cute so magical it makes you want to smile it's a really lovely 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 record i'll continue because why not it says boy i wish you were the peace to get me out of the game if i have to say what i mean is it fair to say all of these visions impair my decisions and i can't stop I'm a little bit fucked on this. I'm a little bit out of time to spend with you. Baby, turn around. Give me one more kiss. I'm a little bit lost on how to stay with you. <laughs> this is one of my best bars. The best bar in this, in this track, verse two. I turn my bussy out. It's been a sec, but I didn't forget how to pull you in closer in case it's not till we're older. Then that we are, that, that, sorry, that we reach the top the pinnacle of everything we are, I feel like my mother might like you, just not the same way I do. Isn't that sweet, right? You're talking about bussies and you're ending it with your mum being a fan of the guy you're probably seeing. So big up Troy Sivan. Honestly, one of my favourite albums to drop this year. Um, it looks like all of the albums that I've enjoyed the most this year have been the ones that haven't been hip-hop. Um, it looks like hip-hop has had a bit of a downturn this year. The quality control hasn't been the greatest. Um, I still think Drake's album was very, very um, under undeservingly panned. I think now going back to it, listening to it, people will probably re re you know reverse their decisions and their knee-jerk reactions to it because I think people just assumed because it was for the dogs, because he was talking a lot of smack online and he was saying certain things, people just assumed it was going to be a stone-cold, rap album back to front but i think it was far better than what people give it credit for still not at its peak what drake could actually do but it was still quite better than what he gave for but in terms of the albums that dropped this year i think outside of hip-hop it's been really good there's been a lot of good pop records a lot of good r&b records and shit a lot of good metal records out there so i really recommend another one to add to your listening um you know whatever you're going to be listening to this week please check out something to give each other by the one and only troy sivan that came out this past weekend really really was impressive um album and i'm just impressed at his you know courage to put together an album 
with only 10 tracks on it after spending so much time on the sidelines, right? Not releasing music to suddenly put out a very unapologetic, a very creative, a very artistic, a very emotional, sensual, personal, but also fun record in the midst of everything that's going on in the world, dropping it now. Perfect, 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 perfect. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Check it out. Check it out if you haven't already.